Hello lovely people, I'm Kay Thrien and welcome to my channel. Um, I'm going to have a go at making a pocket, a tie-on pocket, inspired by this book that I got recently, which I'm still reading my way through. It's by Barbara Berman and Ariane Fenato, and it's called The Pocket, A Hidden History of Women's Lives. Um, and it covers the time period from the mid-17th century, 1660, up to 1900, and it talks about how women's clothing during that time, and still in a lot of cases, did not contain pockets. So women would either, you know, the wealthy women would have their dressmakers make pockets for them, um, and less wealthy women would make their own pockets. So being a less wealthy woman, I'm not having a personal dressmaker, I'm going to have a go at making my own pocket. So I've just um, taken my inspiration from this shape, this is kind of the standard classic shape that you see. There's almost like a teardrop with the point cut off. And then you have a slit down the front that you put your hand in. And then all your belongings are safely stored in this section. And then it has a tie coming around the top that you then tie around your waist. Um, so I've drafted a pattern, which you can draft yourself. You don't need a pattern. It's simple, simple. Um, and I used a bit of copy paper, in case you didn't know what that looked like. You know, A4, we call it this side of the pond. Do you call it letter paper in the States? But, you know, this kind of, this kind of paper. And I just folded it in half along its long side. And then I made little reference marks. And if you just wanted to, at this stage, just, you know, cut a half teardrop, you go for it. But this is, you know, I like to have some reference marks. So here's my actual pattern. So you see how much I cut off. That's the folded edge. Fold. Let's write it on there. Fold. Sorry about that. Fold. And this is the fold of my pattern. So from the fold out two and a half inches here. And then from the bottom up on the unfolded side also two and a half inches here. And then from the fold to here is about two inches like that. Okay, so I had those three marks. So then with a ruler, I just connected those two marks from there to there, like that. And then I just drew, I'll just turn it around because it's easy for me to draw, a curve like that, there. Now if you wanted a more regular curve, you could, you know, find something round and draw around the edge. And then I cut that out. And then the final thing I did, and here it is cut out, the final thing I did was measure down from this top through the center on the fold six inches and made a little mark there because that's where the opening will be, you know, to get our hands in. Clear so far? Hope so. Um, so from there I cut out some pattern pieces, some pieces. So I did, um, <laughs> this is the back, if you're following the weekly slow stitch back stories. There we are. Um, I cut a piece out of some very thin old sheet and then onto the one side of it I collaged lots of scraps of cloth. You know, I laid them on, overlapping them slightly, all little bits and bobs. Um, invisible basted them um, and then I did lots of canther inspired stitching out of my thread ends in both directions because that's the look I like. If you wanted to do some embroidery or just choose some pretty cloth to start with and not do any stitching or whatever, you know, you just need a top piece. And you see that I've cut out that six inch um, slit there for your hand. So that's the top piece. So then you'll need um, a lining piece. This is a bit grungy. It has been washed. That is old linen. I think it was an old tea towel. It has been washed, but that's a stain. But I like that. And anyway, it's going to be inside. So then that's one lining piece that will go on the back of this. Now if you had one piece of sturdy cloth to begin with, you know, like an upholstery cloth or something, you possibly wouldn't need to line it, that would be up to you. But I'm going to put a lining. So that piece there, and that will also have in a bit that slit cut in it, and then a backing piece. And I'm just going to use the same cloth again. It's quite flimsy, but I think it'll be okay. Um, I don't want the whole thing to end up super, super bulky. So there you go. So there'll be three layers with mine. So there'll be the top piece with a lining. Am I? Sorry. <laughs> keep going. I keep creeping out of shot. There'll be the top piece with a lining. And then there'll be a backing piece. 
And then the other things you'll need is something to finish off all the raw edges. I'm going to turn it sideways because then you can see it all. So I've got some little strips of, this is very fine cotton, this is from, um, actually they were my dad's pyjamas. Um, I'm going to have to join strips together. But you need some binding to go all the way around here. And that length, um, if you want to write it down on, on this pattern, is 31 inches-ish. It's always ish. And then you need another piece of binding to go around the opening of your pocket, which is 13 inches because it's 6 plus 6 plus a bit extra wiggle room to get around the corner and so on. All of my strips are one and a half inches wide. And the other thing I've got to bind the slit is some um, bias binding. And I don't know where I got this from. It came out of a you know job lot of something. It's not the world's best bias binding. It's a bit bright red. I could have tea dyed it, but I didn't. Um, but it's just easier, I think, to get round, I hope, to get round this, this part of the, the slit if you've got bias binding. If you don't have bias binding, you could cut some cloth on the bias, you know, cut, cut a piece out on the diagonal. And for this length, it was the slit six inches long, so you need 12 inches, and then I'd do an inch or so more just to enable you to get round there. So that's 13 inches, okay? Um, and then finally, you'll need a piece across the top, which will be um, six inches or so. Although it's only five inches, I want to just turn the ends under just for neatening it off, you know, when I put it on. And then the final thing you'll need is something to go around your waist, you know, something to attach to the pocket and go around your waist. And I've got this um, old bit of cotton tape, which happens to be black, but, you know, I had this in my my basket where I keep that kind of thing. If you didn't have anything like that, cotton tape or anything, you could just get another strip of, you know, a long strip of cloth or join some strips together and do a double fold like that, you know, and then fold it in half to encase the raw edges and then stitch it either by hand or machine, whichever you fancy. Um, mine, for reference, <laughs> is a whopping 50 inches long because I put it around my waist and tied a bow and I wanted some ends, so, you know, that was, if you don't want to know how long it has to be, just get a bit of string, put it around your waist, and that's the length, and don't worry about numbers. Right, um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do now, I've got all my pieces, is I want to attach my lining, my inner lining, to my, my top. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine, I'm going to stitch all around the edge of the slit, a scant quarter of an inch from the edge. And then when I've done that, then I can cut the slit, um, I can look on the back and see where my stitches are because it's quite hard to see with all this going on um, to be sure that I don't cut the lining too far um, and then I'll come back and start putting the binding on. Okay, so I've cut my slit. I've done my <coughs> stay stitching and I've cut my slit out. So now I need to put the bias binding on. And I think the easiest way to do this is to make that V into a straight line. Um, so I've got it now right sides up and I want to sew the bias binding here. I'm just checking because I know this is joined here and there and I don't want to have a join if it's not necessary. So with bias binding you just match the fold with your stay stitching line. My stay stitching line is super wonky but you know, or just inside it and then you push the fold out and then that fold line, can you see? Hang on, I'll put a pin in and I'll show you. So you want to make sure you're just inside the fold line, uh, sorry, the stay stitching line, just this side of it. And then you push the fold out and pin it. And then the fold in the bias binding is your, um, your stitching line. If you made your own bias binding, you could press the folds in, you know, with an iron. So I'm just gonna pin that all the way along. If this seam is too bulky by the time I've finished to get my binding round, I'll just trim it a bit. No worrying about that. And then you could then go and sew this on the sewing machine, but um, I'd much rather do it by hand because of this. You know, just think it would be tricksy. But if you've had got a lot of experience of dressmaking or whatever, you're probably going, yeah, yeah, whatever, Catherine. 
it ain't tricksy at all, we can do that, so then you go and do that. But if you haven't, then I'd recommend doing it by hand. So coming down here into this awkward bit, hope you can see, I'm just going to really make sure, without pulling the binding too much out of shape, but I'm really going to, do you see, I'm really going to ease it around there, using its natural stretch. and put a pin in. And the advantage of hand sewing then of course is when I get there I can always stop and adjust and, and so on. So I'm just going to finish pinning that all the way along to the other end and I'm going to sew it and I'm going to use a running stitch um, with a locking back stitch. So I'm going to take two running stitches forward and then a back stitch and then two running stitches forward and a back stitch and so on. You could do a back stitch all the way if you wanted to. If that made you happy. There we go. <clears throat> now I'm going to trim my end off. I'm going to trim it always. I always trim it a bit big. I can always cut more off. It's easier to cut more off than sew more on. Um, and now I'm just going to get my needle and thread and I'm going to sew that. So when I've done that, I'll be back. I might come back here if it's super tricksy and I think I need to show you something else. Okay, that didn't go too bad at all, so I didn't worry about coming back. I have every faith in you. I just went very slowly and carefully around there um, and made sure my stitching went right down into that point. And in there, actually, I did back stitches all the way just to, you know, so now, what I'm going, what, and the other thing I did, sorry, was I trimmed back everything that was poking out past the, the bias binding. So now I need to turn that to the back, to the inside, and I'm going to just do the same thing again from the other side, and um, whip stitch that down into place. So just fold it over, and put a few pins. And with my whip stitches, I want to be careful that I don't go through to the front, which for me, with because of all the extra layers I've got, is um, not a problem. Um, if you didn't have the extra layers, you know, to bury your stitches into, then maybe you could <coughs> stitch it down with, um, you know, some kind of decorative stitch. So, or you, you could, from the front, you could stitch what's called stitch in the ditch. So you could stitch right along the very edge of the binding so that then it would trap, trap it down on the back, but on the front you wouldn't see it. Or you could do some kind of, you know, just running stitch that you could see, whatever, just to trap that back down. hope that's clear and given options for variations. So again, I'm just going to pin it around the... around the um, awkward bit. This is, this is the worst bit. When this is done, it's straightforward. Probably for a lot of you, you're saying, what, what's your problem? But like I said, I'm not a garment maker. In fact, I'm gonna leave that unpinned, I think, and sort it out when I get there. Um, so i get a bit of this. So I'm just going to do, I've got this red silco to match the red, but it's inside, so it doesn't, you know. Obviously your colour will vary depending on what you're doing, if you want it to be invisible on the inside of your pocket, in case a little mouse climbs in there and says, oh, I can see all your stitching. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what colour it is, does it? It's on the inside of the pocket. Anyway, I've got this red, I'm going to use it if I can only get it in my needle. Okay, so I'll just start the blind stitching, the whip stitching. Um, then I'll go away and finish finish doing that off camera and then I'll um, come back and we'll do the next bit. This is just me making it up, having looked at the pictures in the book, in case you hadn't realised. So I'm just going to come through from the back. And I brought something with me, but we won't worry about that. And then just go under the very edge of the bias into the my lining fabric and then come up about an eighth of an inch or so along. 
So I've got my finger behind just to feel that I'm not coming right through. Although there's so much going on on mine, if there's a tiny little bit of red stitching, I'm not going to worry. Don't like that happening though. So do you see, just literally off the very edge of the binding into the backing cloth and then forward a bit. And I'm going to go and do that all the way around and then I'll come back. Okay, that went okay. I amazed myself. Um, it's not too bad in the little, um, you know, point of the V. And that's how it looks on the back. So you just have to kind of ease it in, you know, and fiddle and faff. But you can do it. I'm sure you can do it. So the next thing I'm going to do now is um, get those, I put a few little pins in just to stop the lining from flippy flopping about. I'm going to get the, the backing piece. So all my pins out. I'm going to get the backing piece. I'm going to get the loose threads off it. And I'm going to stay stitch that to the back of the this piece. I'm going to have it right side out. I mean, you know, this will be the inside of the pocket. This will be against your body. So you choose. Um, and I'm going to stay stitch again. Oh, there's another pin lurking on the sewing machine. Um, am I all in shot? Yes. I'm going to stay stitch again an eighth-ish from the edge, a good eighth, all the way around the edge, not across the top. Am I going to go across the top? Yeah, why not? I'll go across the top as well. Yes, I'm going to stitch. Let me turn it sideways. I'm going to stay stitch around the whole thing. And then the opening is here. Um, a little note, I made my opening six, six inches. My hands are quite big. Um, so it's maybe worth checking. <laughs> maybe it's too late now. Yes, my hand fits. You know, my hands are quite big and they fit. I didn't want, you don't want to go too far down because you're losing useful pocket. But do check before you commit to the size if you've got, you know, if you're a gentleman, I do have some gentlemen watching me, and you've got m great big, you know, manly hands, you maybe want to make a bigger pocket and a bigger bigger opening, okay? So anyway, enough wittering about that. It just occurred to me, sorry. So I'm going to go and stay stitch on the machine all the way around the edge. If you don't have a sewing machine or, you know, you want to do it by hand, then of course you could do that. But I'll go and do that and then I'll be back. Okay, I've done that and um, I've changed my mind <laughs> about, I like the look of that red so much that I'm going to use the red all around the edge as well. I think it would not have been problematic to have strips that were not on the bias around that curve because it's quite a gradual curve. Um, so I think if you did want to just bind that with normal strips and that would go okay. Um, I'm just laying this on just to see. I don't want to say things would be okay and then you find out they're not. Yeah, you see, I think I think that would work fine if you wanted to just bind it with normal cloth. But I like the look of the red, so I'm going to go with the red. Um, so I'm going to leave the top for now. And I'm just going to do exactly the same thing with this great long piece of... I'm just going to check that there's not, not a long enough piece without a join in. Um, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to stitch it first from the front. Um, let's turn it sideways. Let's start here. That makes more sense because I'm right-handed. Um, exactly the same as I did here. Lay the fold against the line of top stitching, which you can't probably see because it's beige, but just against or just inside it, like that. And then open that fold pin it and then sew all the way along the fold, all the way round and then once I've done that then I'll turn it to the back and whip stitch it down in exactly the same way that I did here. So I'll do all that and I'll come back for the tie and the, the finishing off. There we go, so it's all bounded, bound, bounded, binded, bound, bound. Bound is enough. It's all bound with my red, which I'm really pleased with. I think it really makes the um, stitching and everything in between. It gives it a nice frame. I'm going all bright colours. Last Friday I did the rainbow and now I'm doing bright red. Um, my binding's slightly wonky on the back. Well, that's just me. It's just how it turned out. 
but it doesn't matter. So the final, well, the second to final thing to do is to bind this top edge. Now, if you are going to use a long strip of cloth folded for your ties as well, what you could do is just use that same strip to bind the edge. So if I just show you with this smaller bit, so you would do exactly the same thing as we've done, or as I've done with the bias binding, but you'd have this long enough, you know, for your ties, however long that needed to be. So then you'd stitch it there, and then you'd fold it over, and fold it under again on the back, and stitch it down. And then you'd just carry on the folds. Can you see? Then you'd just carry on the folds in and in, like that. Do you see what I mean? To make the ties. So then your binding and your ties would just be all in one. I've also seen them made with a loop, so you could hang it on a belt if you wanted to do that rather than the tie. But I'm going with the tie. So the only difference here with the binding is because I'm going to have two raw edges, I'm going to turn the edge in, the end, the end in. So I'm going to do the same, only I'm going to have it slightly longer, match my fold of my bias binding with my, my stay stitching line. And then I'm going to have it about a good quarter inch or so longer, like that. And then I've put my fold up open my fold up and then fold the end in. Do you see, do you see? And then stitch that down, put a pin in it. And then exactly the same thing at the other end. So I'll pin that on along that, just inside that stay stitching line. And when I get to the other end, I'll trim it to fit. I'm just going to check here that it doesn't look weird. Oh no, it's fine. It's because it's open a little bit. Just, I think it got pushed open when I bound it, bound it, but I don't think that matters. And then when I get to the other end, I'll just trim the binding off, leaving a um, quarter, half an inch or so extra. Somewhere there. So then I can fold that in. And I folded that edge, that probably ends up neater, under the same angle as the side, I just audition. Yeah, I think that ends up neater. So if you fold the edge in, rather than folding it square, if you fold it sort of in line with the side, I think that will work better. So I'll go away and do, so I'll stitch that, flip it over, and stitch it on the back. And if when you stitch your binding on, then you find there isn't enough to turn to the back, you can just trim this seam back a bit, you know, to however far back you need to trim it. And if you've gone a bit wibbly wobbly, you could also then trim that seam straight. Um, and then, see my binding on the front looks straight, so who cares what the back looks like. Um, so I'll go away and do that, and then I'll be back um, to sew the, the tie on. Okay, so that's all my top all bound bound it, um, <laughs> bound, and I did some little whip stitches over the edge there just to lean it up at both sides. So all I'm going to do now is put my tie on. Um, so here's my tie, and I'm going to just find the middle and line it up with the middle of this. And I think I'm going to stitch it just, just over the edge of the binding but just below. You might have different things, so you know, your placement might be different. But I think if I just put it just there, that's, I think, the best place in my case. So I think what I'm going to do is just do a running stitch along the middle. It's quite sturdy, this woven cotton tape. Um, but I think I'm gonna do a running stitch up the middle and then whip stitch both edges, which is probably belt and braces, but you know, I don't want it coming off when it's full of stuff. So, there we go, so it's pinned in place. So all I'm going to do is do that. <laughs> I don't think you need to watch me 
just do a running stitch up the middle making sure I don't go through and I've got plenty of thickness but you will at least have the lining in there um, and then just whip stitch the top and the bottom and then I'll come back with the finished thing just to show you this whip stitching so I've done a line of running stitch up the center of the tape which was into the the binding now I can feel that I'm in only the backing cloth so what I've done is I've put my fingers inside can you see can you see so that I don't stitch the top the, uh, sorry the back to the top I just wanted to show you that so my fingers in there my little stitches will be visible on the inside of the lining but unless aforementioned mouse is um, in there expecting, inspecting my sewing. I don't think it's anything to worry about. My stitches are small enough that they're not going to, you know, offend even the mouse, I don't think. Unless it's a super finickety mouse. And I'm not even sure that, you know, three lines of stitching are completely necessary, but you do what you feel is necessary. Now it might be that here, as I come across here, the stitch might show. So just be aware of that, you know, if your pocket has got this little gap like mine's got. Probably because I didn't pin it when I stay stitched around the edge on the sewing machine and it moved a bit. But, you know. It's difficult to say what's right and what's wrong because to me it's wrong if it offends you and if it doesn't then it's right. I'm just pointing out the possible, see there's a little tiny back black stitch. I don't mind, it's not bothering me. And there's probably going to now be another one. Slightly more tricksy to go this side, but it's manageable. So when I come, when I get to here, I'm going to whip stitch back down that side as well, just to neaten that side. But there I'll be into the thickness of the seam and the binding, so I would think that's no problem. So I'll do all that, and then I shall um, show you the finished thing. Okay, there we go, all finished, and I'm wearing it. I hope you can see. Sorry, I tried to get it at the right height. I can't get further away. Hello, I'm all the way over here. Um, so that my head's in and the pocket's in. But anyway, there you go. You see, I've got it around my waist. I've just got it tied here. I'm wearing black today, so you can't see the black tie. Um, but it's tied to one side. Get my hand in it. That's quite, you know, deep and roomy. I was um, thinking of showing you it with my phone in because I think that's what most people would put in it for going out and about. But I'm filming with my phone so I can't. Um, but yeah, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. A lot of people wear them. Well, some people wear them. Marion on Marion's World I know has one that she wears under her skirt. She makes skirts with slit sides. Perhaps I'll put a link below to her tutorial or her making a skirt. And then she puts a pocket underneath. Where I live, I don't have to worry about pickpockets because um, there's no people. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think I definitely will wear this when I go walking in the woods or whatever. So I hope you like that and um, hope you like my new pocket. And thanks so much for watching as always. And I look forward to you joining me next time for more Cloth Tales. Thank you. Bye bye.